Accessibility is a topic that often gets framed in the wrong context. When you hear that word, most people's thoughts jump to websites and making it easier for people to read. Or if we think about buildings, making it so that everyone, including those with impairments, can more easily access a space. The problem with that approach is that when we apply that methodology to analytics, specifically tools like Tableau, we confine ourselves to thinking about how to make the tool more accessible in an additive way rather than considering it as a core purpose of the tool. In fact, if you step back and think about it for just one moment, you realize that at their heart, analytics tools are primarily accessibility tools for data. They have the power to transform raw data into a more digestible format. For instance, you can build a hierarchy into a data set, then aggregate that data to condense millions of records into a concise summary. They also offer visual analytics capabilities that cater to your visual perception, stimulating your cognitive ability to ask questions and delve deeper into a narrative. To put it more bluntly, Tableau is an accessibility tool for data. Every step taken to consider accessibility by Tableau or by its users gives us more choice and agency about how we consume data. This was the profound thought that I was left with while talking to Ron Eisenstein about accessibility in Tableau and more specifically his journey into this topic and how it's impacted the way he approaches his work over the last few years. We spent an hour talking about it and found a few places where Tableau can do more to bring accessibility front and center as a product philosophy rather than just a set of capabilities it supports. Ron also had some fantastic ways of explaining big topics in analytics. I think you'll agree when you watch this video, he is passionate about this topic and I couldn't think of anyone better to talk to about this. As ever, let's get stuck in. Ron, how are you doing? It's been a I'm while. Doing well. <laughs> doing well, thank you. Thanks so much for uh, connecting with me. Yeah, I, I think I have to give people the context because we started talking Oh, I think last year, towards the end of last year. And for one reason or another, we put something sort of further back because of a 24.1 release. And we basically never, well, I never, sorry, I never followed up the connection. <laughs> equal, <laughs> equal accountability. Yeah. Right, right. And then from, I think what happened is I was doing the Tableau, uh, what what is it called? The Tableau um, 24.2 coming soon sort of roundup. And in my head, I saw something. I was like, ah, oh, accessibility, Ron. I need to talk to Ron. <laughs> so, so here we are. I watched that. I was like, oh, <laughs> that's fun. Exactly. I was watching videos. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, like, um, I guess it's probably good to do an introduction. Ron, who are you? What do you do? And, uh, yeah, tell us a bit about yourself. Absolutely. Uh, I'm Ron Eisenstein. I'm an engineering team lead for a, an innovative fundraising software company called Evertrue. I discovered Tableau around 2010, and I've been an avid user ever since. Uh, I think it was the first tool I ever used that allowed me to express myself uh, fully creative, uh, creatively and I think intellectually, so big fan. And, uh, <laughs> that's kind of my, uh, my, my thing. Amazing, amazing. And, and I guess one of the things I always like to ask people when they talk about Tableau is what's the first version of Tableau they used? Do they, do they, do they recollect that? Because I think that, that gives you a time and place in the Tableau world, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I have been a super fan for a really long time. My, my enthusiasm began in Tableau 5. Wow, um, and, and that, is, that. <laughs> that is that is the youngest Tableau we've heard on, on this channel. I think that by a country mile, so Tableau 5, wow. I know, there's there's and I was learning then from the Tableau superstars at the time, the Andy Creevels and yeah. Joe Mako. And yeah. I think I was, you know, we were reading PDFs back then about how to learn <laughs> Tableau. And I was like, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't, you know, it's like I learned Tableau completely wrong. And right. it's, it's like I, I used the show me, which was the wrong thing to do. And, <laughs> uh, not many people know that still. So I think you're okay. Everyone, everyone okay. needs to show me. I think you're fine. <laughs> And I, then I went deep into the pills. I love I love learning the ins and outs of uh, Tableau. Good, good. And I guess, um, you know, what had you been using before Tableau? I think it's also good to ask that because there's uh -huh. always sort of like, um, there's always a journey <laughs> into Tableau. So I guess I'd, I'll ask that, like, what led you to Tableau in the first place? Yeah, I, you know, there was a little bit of resistance. I was, I had some fear and trepidation. Um, I was being encouraged to use Tableau. I had used... Um, Back in the like internet days, I was using uh, sorry dot com days. It was like 
Visual Studio VB something or other. Right, right. And then it was InfoMaker, and then it was Crystal Reports. And so I used Crystal Reports until 2010, and I was encouraged to do dashboards. And I was like, what's the point? I didn't understand it. <laughs> And, you know, I, did, I just didn't, it was like, what's the point of the pictures? And then I was like, oh, now I see. Right, so I became right. a quick believer. That's like the traditional arc for most Tableau users, like kicking and screaming <laughs> with their tables. And then they, they, <laughs> they, exactly. They, they get it. <laughs> was that your, was that your experience that did you, did, how did you jump in? It was kind of similar. I came from a digital marketing background. I came, um, I came from the world where social media was just taking off and analytics in social media was sort of starting to become a pretty big thing. Now it's just completely industrialized. But back then, all we were doing is counting likes and tweets. And I just didn't, I just didn't find the sort of the efficacy in some of that. So I thought there'd be more to, to data than there was. And so I started just working in communications and, and a bunch of other areas. And I, I kind of bumped into Tableau through um, someone I knew at university, Craig, who worked at the information lab and kind of said, look, you kind of seem to be, you know, bubbling around this data topic in lots of different ways, but you're not just getting into it. Why not come at work <laughs> at the information lab and just get stuck into it properly? And so that's, uh, that's sort of what led me to Tableau. Then I realized I've been using Tableau well before because I was interacting with some data that our university used and they were presenting it in Tableau oh, okay. public. And so I was like, huh, so this is how they were doing it. And so, yeah, <laughs> full okay, circle cool. in a way. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's a very, very interesting. Tableau 7 was my first version of Tableau. Oh, so, okay, excellent. So not excellent. too far from you. <laughs> yeah, totally. About the same. Yeah, Tableau 7, you can almost like, those are such monumental upgrades. I oh, huge. That was the LOD land. or Huge, like... yeah. Yeah, like, and, you know, Tableau 10 was the design version, right? That was when the design... <laughs> fundamentally change and when i say fundamentally it probably looks more different than today but that was when we got today's sort of interface in tableau that didn't look like windows 95 or something like that right so yeah that was a huge release and that one i was i remember doing a, i was a beta tester and i enthusiastically provided my feedback and they reached out and i'm quoted on the tableau 10 release right so it's like ron eisenstein uh, extreme super fan because i said it made me look like a graphic designer yeah, something like that because it did it like yeah. made me look i have a terrible drawer i can't draw anything but for some reason i can make things look nice in tableau so it kind of felt like it gave me the power to do that very good very good and you know um something i started last year with andy cockgrave you know andy right um mm -hmm. he he gave me access to some documentation going back all the way to version one of Tableau. So oh, like wow. <laughs> I have I have all the documentation from version one all the way till to today. And it's it's radical going through the documentation because of course one of the big formats for the documentation was PDFs, as you highlight. But then also just some of the things you, you go back and you look at it and you go, how do you build a bar chart? It's literally not changed. It's the same <laughs> idea. <laughs> the same yeah, core yeah, concept yeah, yeah. they got it right 20 years ago and here we are um today um in, in the world of tableau and i think one of the one of the things i have to say i'm, I'm sort of i was i've been ignorant about for a long time and it's kind of why we're here today is, is accessibility right like i i think more recently i have become more conscious of accessibility more generally for a bunch of different reasons personal but also just you know professionally accessibility has become a topic that we talk about and so maybe give people a, a bit of a sample about sort of why you care about accessibility sort of what got you into into this sort of area before we go into it in a bit more detail yeah absolutely i think i've always had sort of a a, a soft spot for um, accessibility I, I have my parents are healthcare providers um, I've always like sort of thought about um, community and, and equity and accessibility is really about equity. And so my, my stark experience with accessibility or with Tableau was an accessibility uh, review. Right. <laughs> and I think that's what really um, galvanized and focused me uh, most recently around accessibility because my my idea of accessibility uh, originated as a web developer and some really some basic tenets of web development using alt tags and um, tables and yeah. all the kind of the, the really those basics and i think i've observed it evolve over time and there really wasn't a lot of accessibility conversations in reporting um and but i think it it has come to the surface 
um, in the last maybe five to 10 years, especially yeah. there's, there are larger communities um, and best practices have sort of evolved and formalized. And right. I know Tableau regularly has accessibility tests that they undergo. Um, and I really started thinking about the most in this, like this, this, in your face, very like brutal takedown of my <laughs> dashboard. <laughs> Where, you know, I, I had done dashboards like, with this amazing team, the central IT folks at Berkeley doing COVID dashboards. And I thought they were relatively accessible. And just like when I start out with Tableau, you think you know something and then you yeah. just like discover you, you know nothing. Someone, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. And I was like, they were sort of preparing me for the experience that they have reasonable but high expectations and some of them you can't actually meet because of the limitations of the tools that right. you're using right um and so uh my degree is in poli sci so i'm like what can i do to support their efforts um and so i can kind of show you what yeah. what started us so Absolutely. we had our let me go here we had our review. This is an example of the COVID dashboard. And the feedback was most importantly that it wasn't as accessible as it should have been. Namely, if you use a, a screen reader, which is a common device for those who are unable to use a, a mouse or they have visual impairments, um, tab ordering is really important. And as you know, when you're building a dashboard, you're building it without thinking about tab order. And of course, they showed the example and I downloaded the screen reader. And I think one thing about accessibility is I think that everyone feels like they're learning. And so the process of downloading and using a screen reader was illuminating. Yeah. So I tabbed through the dashboard and I was like horrified at the experience. And I started doing research and I was like, well, how do I get around this? And people are like, oh, all you have to do is go into the XML. And I was like, what? That's a hack. Like, <laughs> there has to be a better uh, way, thank right? Thank you for saying that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, whenever you mention hacks, I'm like, yes, this is not a solution. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Join the club. I, I, I literally need to, 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 to make T-shirts about hacks. <laughs> Does it count? <laughs> the, the amount of people that come to me and say thank you for talking about hacks, I was like, <laughs> you could have been talking about it too. Let's let's just be open about this. Like, yes. it's, it's no secret here. Like, <laughs> right? If you don't know how it works, I mean, like, I tried to fiddle with the XML, and I was like, this is a nightmare. I yeah, mean, like, this is yeah. not something one should be editing directly. Yeah. Um, and so I, you know, what I suggested is. First, let's implement your suggestions, what I can implement, which was essentially a download stats option. Great. Okay. Because ultimately, people just want the underlying numbers. I think everyone, regardless of um, yeah. accessibility and accessibility, that that sort of speed to insight, that, that really helps. So we did implement that and we said, you know what, let's create a video. Let's create uh, a, an idea. And could you help us advocate for nice. this feature nice. and uh it this youtube video that my colleague created with the folks at berkeley yeah yeah it got some attention from tableau and i was delighted um how responsive tableau was mm -hmm. because accessibility is one of those things that just it wasn't prioritized because people weren't clamoring for it but it was always there it was just under the surface and the folks at tableau reached out to our friends at Berkeley and started talking about this. And I don't know if it sort of coincided. There's a, um, but then we started seeing releases. And I was, I remember when you did, you know, I always watch your release videos. And I was like, you were talking about accessibility and how important it was. I was, yeah. I was, I was beaming. Yes, um, maybe good. it was like, maybe like three years ago. <laughs> and now that, uh, yeah. now there's a PM. And yeah. maybe uh, uh, Blake, he's wonderful. Blake, yeah. Really Absolutely. important. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting because my, my experience of accessibility started mainly with colors and and there's a little mm. bit of context which is i think well let me start with like the high level point here which is just what is accessibility right yeah and i think people think of accessibility in the domain that they typically come across it so 
we typically talk about um, people with impairments or disabilities, right? And that that's normally categorized into certain categories. So hearing, vision, um, uh, speech, um, mm -hmm. and then you've got mobility, right? And then mm -hmm. there's one mm -hmm. which we don't talk often about, but cognitive, right? Mm -hmm. And actually Tableau, weirdly, is a tool that's built squarely in the cognitive realm because it allows you to point a tool at a bunch of numbers and use a visual form to make, guess what, the data more accessible, right? <laughs> so like, exactly, exactly. So, like, exactly. so, so Tableau is an accessibility tool out <laughs> of the gate. And it's such a, it's like when you think about the term of accessibility, that is what it is. That is literally what accessibility is about, making people um, more able to access something that is otherwise hard in its existing format connect to xml connect to json tablet just lets you connect to it and look at it visually mm. so it's really interesting that i think accessibility isn't framed in that context i.e everyone benefits from accessibility when you do it well and you have to go it's more of a scale right it doesn't start from it's not like there's a score and from that point onwards it's accessibility onwards right it's actually it starts from zero right. everyone benefits up until a certain point but then you have to do more to get more people over the threshold the further up the scale you go and that's what makes it inclusive in in that sense right mm. and that's sort of where i am today that's sort of this is the journey i've come sort of come across but you know very naive yeah. understanding of accessibility to where to where i am now going like this is a fundamental i uh, think that needs to be thought of differently actually for you then to be able to do it well and i think tableau is sort of on that journey as well yeah, I think that's an astute observation, and that and that is precisely what Tableau has allowed uh, folks like us to achieve. And 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 you know the power of a software engineer in the hands of a user. And now you see with Wave three and Wave four, they want to yeah, yeah. empower more folks, right? Yeah. Business analysts. How do we get more people focused on being data driven? And you're right. I think you know I I have sort of reached that same sort of view or similar view, right? Not you afraid you described it in a really um, a nice way, and I think more broadly than I was thinking about. But you know, I think the speed to 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 insights and how that's achieved, and through just dashboard design best practices, correct. You're yeah. moving toward accessibility, yeah. And that happens through continual refinement, just like the dashboards we do. You're always refining, and I think feedback is a really important part of the the process. Yeah. I. I had the privilege of talking to the advancement tug accessibility a leader colin he's wonderful um and you know he was giving me some feedback and it's you know what made me feel better was you know i think everyone kind of feels like we don't know enough and i think that's true yeah and that's why you always talk to people smarter right you yeah. talk to you talk to the pms who you know that that is it's it's i think it's it's incumbent on all of us to to learn and then we're then we can educate ourselves we've seen like the tableau come out with the ability to edit uh, alt text and keyboard navigation for the grid view, including mobile, changing the keyboard navigation default from left yeah. to right. Mm -hmm. And these things are really exciting and encouraging. Um, but I, I, I totally agree with you. It's like, yeah. we are, our jobs are, are about all about accessibility. Exactly. And, and then one other area, which again, is something that I think it's a pretty important conversation in the community and it's about sort of where the product is going. And mm. specifically in this context, I want to talk about the technology because we see Tableau moving a lot of capabilities to the browser. And something I wanted to sort of get your take on is, you know, Tableau has got this heritage of features. So from, from such a long time and they've generally been, you know, we, we, you know, they've been, they've not been bolted on over time, but it, it's very much an evolution for, very well understood idea, right? And with this transition to web, I wonder if there's more opportunity to to, to, to encompass accessibility through the web because of the existing mm. advancements elsewhere in the web. Oh, yeah. And actually one of the downsides of, you know, sticking around with actually Tableau desktop is the only piece of software, the Tableau ship to a computer. Like mm. I always want to just remind people that because Tableau <laughs> <laughs> Tableau, Tableau Prep is web software packaged to run on your desktop. That is 100% the case. It runs on something called Electron. Cloud and server run through the browser. Pulse in the browser. Literally, the rest of the platform is all in the browser. Desktop is the only piece that 
runs on software. And guess where accessibility, I think, is the worst? I think it's still desktop, right? Because okay. all the accessibility has been added on to the browsing experience, not so much the authoring experience, right? Yeah. So yeah, I'd sort of what's your what's your sort of take on that? Do you, do you think there's more opportunity in in the web realm, or um, do you think there's actually more they could do with desktop um, that that, it, that you know that is planned or has happened that I'm not aware of that actually sort of counters that sort of proposition I've I've put? Yeah, I think within desktop there are fewer. I mean, I think I would probably want to get a Tableau developer's perspective who has an impairment yeah, to get right. their sense, right? Because I, I don't think I can speak for them. What right. I can speak to more is the experience of someone who is interacting with the web browser. And that's actually a really good point because I think I just, I I conflated those two things, right? <laughs> I didn't, I didn't, I didn't actually sort of clarify. I should have clarified that in my question in itself. So that that shows you sort of, I've sort of got a bit of learning to do that, but it's absolutely right. Yeah. There is accessibility in the author experience and there's accessibility in the consumption yeah. experience, two vastly different halves of, of sort of the tableau world, right? Yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunity, especially in the, in the web experience in the Tableau online and the Tableau server, that web experience and the ability to interact with visualizations in a way that's meaningful. And, and one of the things I, I haven't had a chance to do that I wanna do is I have text in a dashboard that I can show you later. I don't know how a web screener, web screener is gonna, gonna handle it, right? Like <laughs> right. you wanna have, you wanna be able to control the experience. And I think yeah. tab ordering is one of those things yeah. because it's really what is, and as I, the more I use Tableau, the more I think about our work is really about data storytelling. And all of these features, these bolt-ons that you're talking about have been uh, an attempt to include more people and also showcase and empower people to do data storytelling. Right. Like the, the storyboards was one of those like bolt-ons that didn't really catch on, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, ask data, like all of these things, like the, yeah. the intention is there, right? Yeah. There's a lot yeah. of how do we do the next thing? And I think... I think there's a lot of opportunity still in the in the web um, yeah. for accessibility. I just imagine at some point your dashboard will just tell you stuff. What you're doing. Like, yeah. <laughs> and and in a way, that's that's what yeah technologies like ChatGPT potentially have to offer, right? Because those tools seem to create the bridge between intent and language in a way that computers haven't been able to do before, which is, which is fantastic. And I, yeah. you know, I think Tableau Pulse is an interesting implementation of AI. It's, it's not actually the one I thought Tableau would go with first, but oh, you know, I'll, I'll give it, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and kind of let them play that out. I, I partly think that's because, you know, a product like Tableau can't give wrong answers. So they couldn't go down a path. <laughs> yeah. they, they couldn't go down a path that would enable that. And that means they have to start with a more boring side of AI, basically, which is the summary right. side of AI. Like let, let AI summarize these facts in a way that's sort of, you know, easy to consume. They can't go down the sort of interpretation and intention rate in a way that OpenAI or Google can and get things wrong. Like even if you get it wrong 1% of the time in a, 3000 person organization that's too often like <laughs> right no it's like yeah. such a great observation it's so true the work that we do it's like it's 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 not it's not it's just perfect has to be perfection or it's all wrong right yeah, like exactly they have this very controlled environment yeah, it's funny like um i don't know if you follow technology but it has the same tolerance for inaccuracy as a keyboard right because if if even just one letter doesn't work one percent <laughs> of the time in, in, like <laughs> <laughs> like, it, the, the the opportunity for error is crazy and actually macbooks had that issue with a specific uh a range of keyboards they made which were too thin and so people were getting the key stuck and so oh, the wow. keys would fail 0.001 percent of the time but that meant in a 1000 word essay there'd be three typos you didn't know that, <laughs> right and it's such a funny like way to think of <laughs> the scale of mistakes and and where it needs product design but anyway that's a that's a huge tangent uh, no it's a really in interesting conversation because i think what we're talking about like ai and analytics yeah i mean because we're really talking about like ceos what ceos want and what's Correct. possible and tableau is moving very uh, deliberately there um, yeah but yeah keyboards accessibility it's it's all the same realm right like um exactly. so if i if i if i bring it back to um sort of 
the core of you know what are the big things that Tableau have done in the last few years? Because I, I maybe I'm, I'm I'm sort of wrong about this, but I do get the sense there is a lot more momentum. We've got a product manager Blake who's who's doing some fantastic mm-hmm. work, sort of uh, pushing certain things through. So what are those sort of big things that I, you you think have enabled accessibility to be something? I'm not going to say a big thing because you know I'm not sure marketing always follows through with you know with that intent. But let's say something that people should consider doing more of because there are now things they can they can do about that topic if they choose to sort of go down that road. Yeah, I think the the bare minimum that well, and just so just when you're mentioning Blake, I think for the for just a few years ago, accessibility is reaching the what's new section. And maybe these accessibility right. features have happened. And we okay. know with every release, there are always things that aren't in the release page. Release notes, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so those are always interesting, but these are getting top billing. And I think that's really important. I think when we're, when we're looking at accessibility, um, I think there's things you can do independent of the tool. Right. So there's parts that are part of the tool, like editing the alt text, and um, and uh, you know, of course, upgrading so you can take advantage of the the keyboard navigation defaulting. Mm-hmm. Um, but some of the the best practices around accessibility using clear titles, having clear documentation, clear headers. Um, I sometimes use ChatGPT for inline mm-hmm. documentation to rewrite what I have to make it a little clearer. Nice. I think consistency in navigation, layout, right. yeah. and structure. Um, I think those those are some big ones. So, would you promote things like a UI kit? I've had um, uh, uh, um, name escapes me. See, it's gonna kill me. It's gonna kill me. Uh, <laughs> Robert Janicek. Oh God, <laughs> that took a while. <laughs> that was a high stress moment. That's fine. <laughs> Very high stress. I won't, I won't edit that out. I'm true to myself. <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> I could have just cut that gap, but you know, make, make it short. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll, no, le- no. I'll leave it as long as it should be. We've had Rob <laughs> come on to talk about things like UI kits. I think the value of UI kits is they do promote that sort of consistency in design. Mm. And potentially something like a UI kit can have accessibility built into it, which then enables many more people to just be out of the block thinking about accessibility without even having to do the work because you've given them a starting point. That has that in mind. Is that something you've seen in your work, or is that maybe is that maybe still quite a young area in the in the, in the Tableau world? And the UI kit you're talking about, sort of the templating approach, just to make sure. Yes, I... exactly. So um, Rob has like two things. I'll, I'll sort of explain them briefly. The UI kit, which is like a Figma tool, which allows you to prototype and design sort of a Tableau dashboard before you actually go and build it. Mm-hmm. Then there's a second bit, which is the actual template in Tableau that has a pre-built like skeleton that you then just drag your sheets into and it starts to think about that. That's, those are sort of the two realms. Yeah, no, I think that makes, I, I saw that, I remember seeing that video, it was very, very cool. Um, I, I do think it's really important for, you know, you're trying to achieve a few things. You, you want your dashboards to look professional. Yeah. You want them to be adopted. And of course, to have some action oriented elements and accessibility all woven in. And I think those UI kits and templates are really important. We have a, a less sophisticated version of the that with templates. Like mm-hmm. this is generally the framework. This is the shading here. I don't want to completely limit the folks yeah. I work with around everything because there's an element of creativity. And I think sometimes if you yeah, say just right. these seven colors, <laughs> um, but you know, I, and I, one of the things I think is really important for any Tableau developer and something that I've emphasized is the importance of understanding pre-attentive processing. And I remember okay. that was one of the first videos. So that's the same thing with speed to insight and decluttering, because if you don't have the foundation, just like the green pill, the blue pill, mm-hmm. then you can easily over clutter and make your dashboards less accessible. Um, so I think that's like a, a pre a pre watch before I do and I've done any training I'm like these are best practices for right. shortening the time to insight. Yeah, could could you give like a little like short summary of what pre attentive? I think you talk about pre attentive attributes in relation to pre attentive yeah. processing. Is that yeah. sort of where you're going? I don't know if you can give like a a, a quick snippet of how you describe yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah, so yeah, people yeah. know that this is actually something to go look for. Totally, absolutely. According to some research, every single second. 100 million bits of information is processed in your brain without even you recognizing it. It's pre, 
before right. and attentive before you realizing it. So it's in the primal cortex. So there's a direct line from your visual cortex to your primary cortex in your brain. The, the picture is like right there. And the first thing you notice is luminance. And then the next level after that, right. I spoke to, I educate myself talking to like a neuropsychologist is David Salisbury. Brilliant, oh, wow, right? So, okay. Um, the more you learn, right? You know, you know nothing. <laughs> the <deeper you> get, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, let the experts do his thing. Um, so then what they discovered in 1980, I think it was 1984. Right. And this was on the Tableau website, which got me so excited okay. because they understood this. Like wow. this was early on where when they looked at um, how quickly people realized outliers were there. And right. outliers is when you turn your head. It's even when you're driving, you notice those outliers. Right. And the very first thing you noticed faster than absolutely anything else is height something above something else. Right. So this element is this element. Right. Then secondarily, it's length. So it's easy to tell the outliers from length, but not as quickly as top, right. um, the top to bottom. Yeah, and yeah. then goes slope and right. angle, yeah. which then explains why pie charts take a little bit more time to process and people get all upset about pie charts. Um, <laughs> depends on the use case, right? Yeah, yeah. And, then, and then there's color density. And so it's very valuable to dual encode dashboards. And some of it just co becomes common sense. You're like top to bottom, left to right, most yeah. important. But yeah. then you understand the why, not just doing it. Right. Amazing. I think I think that's the best explanation. Of that. <laughs> that's a huge compliment from you. Because <laughs> I've read that. I've read that in like Stephen Few's book, and it's boring in the book. Like. <laughs> Honestly, like your explanation was just so much more better and engaging. This might have to turn into a short or something. Oh, um, that's fine. I think, yeah, I, think, totally. I, think, I think you explained it in a really nice way and you led into it beautifully. So thank you. Thank you oh. for doing that. And and, and that's, Absolutely. that's in a way, that's a testament to the fact that you've spent time doing this. It, it, it takes time to be able to explain something that complex well to people in a simple way. So um, yeah, no, <laughs> thank you. For, awesome. Thank you for doing thank that. You. Oh, While you were doing that, I was I was behind. You probably saw me looking away from your screen. Um, you're probably thinking, "Why is Tim not paying attention to my incredible <laughs> no, explanation of pre-attentive <laughs> attributes?" <laughs> and attention. I, I picked up thinking. on something you said, which was, you know, the release, um, the release mm. notes, right? And yeah. something that a lot of people don't know is that tableau have what is called the marketing release notes which go out to like the tableau blog that's the list you see that's the video i cover mm -hmm. and then you have this which is the tableau release navigator which is a blow by blow list of not just features that are new but changes as well oh, okay wow. and something i did literally half an hour before our call is i went into this and i said hmm, how would i know about all the accessibility um features the tableau huh. have worked on and I think, huh, surely I should be able to go to this and just type in accessibility and I should be able to find them yeah. because you'd think so. And I actually did exactly that. Uh, firstly, I have to be able to spell accessibility. Uh, you can see I've got it wrong there. Thank God I've got a... Yeah, uh, now I'm it's a, not, I'm a now right it's not click, gonna, correct my spelling kind of uh, It's not going to let me right click. I have a, oh God, it's also tiny. So let me do this. Let's see. X, let's do this. Access... Ability. I believe Spellcheck is coming soon, isn't it? In Tablet Cloud. Yes, and... <laughs> yes that was a huge <laughs> announcement. <laughs> oh, for like, we don't sake. have time for spelling. Let me see accessibility. Just Google it and get my type it corrected for me here. And I... <laughs> I was always out of the first round in, in elementary school. There we go. Spelling okay. piece. So, I so if I, I hit can... enter, nothing. And and, and oh, so the term accessibility is not actually used in the in the features list. So you wouldn't you wouldn't, even if you were just using sort of the natural sort of documentation, this is searching sort of the descriptions about the features as well. Um, mm -hmm. And this definitely works. If I type in cloud and hit enter, it works, right? So like, it's not, <laughs> it's not that it's not working. So the uh, term yeah. accessibility is not being used along with the features. Now, that's not a big deal. But the thing is, and I always mm -hmm. say this about the Tableau product, how would you know what to search for? if you were looking right. for the accessibility features because you have <laughs> yeah. to intimately know what they are and what they what they are are not terms that anyone would be searching for like you know tab order is not something yeah. you'd be searching for in context of accessibility and so 
what I did was I, I actually found this page, which I think um, Kelly, um, I don't know if you know Kelly Gibson, but this is basically something that Blake seems to be updating, which is basically oh, like nice. a running order of the different different notes in accessibility over time. Um, and it seems to be like the greatest hits of Tableau and accessibility and, you know, the, the kind of the previous, the, the big changes in previous versions, but also um, some of the newer mm. things aren't in here, but uh, uh, he did update it fairly recently. So I guess the point I'm making is if you wanted to go one place and find out everything that's changed in accessibility, that, that place doesn't actually exist. You mm. kind of have to have what I would call deep knowledge of the community to know who to ask, yeah. to know where to find it. And and so yeah. in a way, I think that could be like a great first step in terms of making this more readily available. And it's not, it's not, yeah. um, you know, this isn't on Blake. I, I know how like Tableau works. And the reason this is on a forum is because probably Blake can't get the buy-in to get a whole page <laughs> done, right? <Yeah. laughs> like the, the, the way I got to this is I actually found, um, if I search accessibility, or where am I also, I'm, I'm clicking on the screen, um, I was clicking on the screen recording. I got to this page and it links to the FAQ, which is like, huh, the Tableau have a page, um, yeah. it's product yeah. accessibility, but it, it's not a showcase like, you know, Tableau pulses, right? Like Tableau pulses is a bit of a showcase right. of what that capability is. So like, I know for a fact the way Tableau works, this is not, this isn't, you know, Blake needs to be empowered to be able to fill out this page to really talk yeah. about what Tableau is doing in this space. And that's why, he kind of has to link to the something he can update more readily and <laughs> freely. Yeah. And I know he's absolutely passionate yeah, about it. And he he's is, invited absolutely. people to yeah. speak with him. And as long as I've used Tableau, there's never been, and I think that Correct. that Tableau dashboard is a really useful thing. And I don't, did Tableau create that or is that yeah. a user? Yeah, it's, it's such they, a funny okay. thing. It's cool product <laughs> marketing. <laughs> okay. it, <laughs> this is um and, and not only that it's done in multiple different languages as well oh wow so it it it's actually quite a it's quite an accessible resource but let me tell you this the only people oh. using this are the people who know about it because mm. i use it a lot because of course i do features and sure. what's new i have made videos about it and i still keep linking it to people and people are surprised by it that people find it new and mm. the other thing you can do um if you select let's say this has turned into, let's say, let's say, let's do desktop and yeah, yeah, yeah. and 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 do that, and then say, uh, you can tick all these. Um, what do we call these add-ons? You know, Tableau hates that word, but that's what they are. So that's what we'll call mm -hmm. them. And you can kind of go through these and, and just drill down to specific version or specific year, all the way back to 2019. So it's actually quite nice. a powerful resource. Yeah. But here's the thing: if you're, let's say, upgrading. Uh, let's say server. In this case, this also means cloud. And you're going from, let's say, 21.4 oh. to 23.3 as an example, right? It tells you yeah. all the net changes between those versions, that is which cool. is an incredibly good list, right? So this is yeah, a, this is this, this is, is awesome. a very good list. Um, and then if you click on it, it actually lets you click and go to that 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 specific feature and 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 thing. So it's also good way to browse the documentation and the secret thing i love about this is there's obviously a workbook and you can download it which means the data about the releases is oh, also in okay. there which then means you can you can sort of track that a little bit more you can kind yeah, of yeah, play yeah. around with some of the capabilities i've done some analysis on this data so if you're into like features of Tableau and you want the data oh, source, yeah. this is a, this is it. Anyway, another time. That is so cool. I know that's like, <laughs> I mean, talking, it's, it's access to information. I didn't know. Like I vaguely knew that there's this dashboard, but I, I mean, the thing is like, I didn't know how detailed it was. And also the deprecated and changed, like that's yeah. like a dream. I'm like, yeah. I want to know. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, cause people know, you start noticing things. It's like, they change the iconography yeah. in the dash in the, you know, server or yeah. whatever version it's like that's the kind of stuff i want to know and also that i know and retired and retired so if i just get rid of new and i just yeah. keep um you just uh about other than new features you get deprecated retired and uh changed and updated as well so when they change a feature they change a capability you oh, get wow. the update as well so it's a very good way of tracking deltas as well between because you know this happens something has changed but you're like I swear this used to work a different way. Our behavior used to work a different way. And it's like, okay, now, um, now this, you know, now this works as it should. And and here I'm doing a delta between these two releases, so you, you don't see quite as much. Oh, but cool. when you go to like more recent versions, it has been updated since twenty three point three. Um, 
it doesn't have twenty four point one on there. Now, what's funny is whenever I make a video. <laughs> About three months later, a product manager messaged me and goes, oh, yeah, you know that thing you said wasn't up to date? It is up to date now. (laughs) (laughs) It's like you you are the reminder system. (laughs) (laughs) If you're watching this tableau, let's get this updated for 24.2 at least. (laughs) That would be fantastic because I think it is a useful resource, but it's only useful if people use it. So that's why I also promote it, right? Use it or lose it. You can't complain about this if you're not using it. And here I am helping uh, spread the word. But anyway... Love accessibility it. features i think could be better marked on here i'm not mm-hmm. saying it should be like a separate category but i think the term accessibility or some sort of tag or something we can use maybe maybe it's even like there's a workbook version of this which has been pre-filtered for accessibility that's you know posted in the in the forums uh like you know where was it in this page or no this one in this page would be sort of a nice touch um but yeah but that, I, think, that's, yeah, I think that's a great idea that's following on from your point about you know marketing and 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 sort of you know looking at that but i don't want to sort of lose track of what we're talking about um you've got a workbook right and i i don't know what you were planning to do with the workbook but i i thought let me make sure i give you an opportunity to do that (laughs) otherwise we could we could stay here and talk for hours on end about (laughs) pretty much everything (laughs) coming across (laughs) let me stop sharing here we go yeah all right absolutely let me share my screen this is a dashboard I've been working on uh, nice. at Evertrue. Nice. And uh, this is a fundraising dashboard. Right. Uh, taking inspiration. Uh, it's our Clarity product from um, the accessibility best practices, including the use of iconography nice. and yeah, dual yeah. encoding. And the purpose of the dashboard is to demonstrate donors who give to a charitable organization and those who increase their giving from year to year, they decrease their giving from year to year right. or maintain their giving. And I think one of the things I've learned is there has to be a quick takeaway for those who aren't as sophisticated or don't want to go deep into the details. Right. And so um, the almost dual encoding of and sort of quick takeaways and maybe even chat GPT inspired uh, descriptions that allow people to read it, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. starting with, I guess, uh, a title that I sort of scrutinize that has as few words as possible. That's right. That's bolded um, from the top. Right. Okay. Yeah. I, d- I didn't even think that far, but like businesses love to give their dashboards like wonderfully long, illustrious titles. <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> I was like, how do I try to do it? It's still longer than I normally do, but I was like, it's a lot going on there. Yeah. And I sometimes use ChatGPT. I'm like, how is, I said, I gave ChatGPT two suggestions and it was like, no, do this other one. Not for this dashboard, but sometimes it comes up with like good ideas. Profound answers. Yeah. 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 Whoever they scraped that information from is doing a fantastic <laughs> job. That's funny. <laughs> I, I love teaching. So right. um, I always embed a, oh, oh um, nice. Like a training video here. So oh, then people can, wow, is... like, I think this is accessibility, right? Like yeah. trying to get people, yeah. and you're enthusiastic. <sighs> so smart um, is that like a um, little um web container sorry i'm i'm one of these yeah like, yeah yeah, totally no like, i love it i love it <laughs> love, i love that you're interested yeah it's just a web container and then it's a loom video that you yeah, embed yeah. and then you just take the that's embed so portion. elegant that is so elegant. awesome and it plays it plays because i i thought wait a minute is that like i thought it was opening a new tab but no you've kept it in context which again in a web world means that you open that tab, it's going to play the video. I know in desktop, it gives you all these warnings about like links and stuff. Right. But actually, once you get it on um, uh, on the browser in Tableau Cloud or Tableau Server, that video just plays. And, and Loom is a fantastic tool. I, I don't, mm-hmm. if, you, if you click on it again, I think it's just worth showing people like what effort did this take you? It's a three minute video, right? Like how, how hard was this to do? I mean, it took me five minutes. Exactly. Like, exactly. Yeah, it's so simple. So simple it's right? right through the web. Yeah, and they're hosting this video, right? So you're not having yeah, to worry absolutely. about being like me and editing videos and, and stuff. You just hit record <laughs> and <laughs> like, I wish my life was this easy, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> you should see what I'm going to have to do to edit this video. And I'm like, looking okay, oh, at no. this. And I'm yeah, going, we've, oh. we've gone to lots of different places. You know, I mean, I think it's great because I think it's also when, when people start looking at a dashboard, they're yeah. initially intimidated. They, they're sizing it up. Yeah. It, they almost do it like a Sudoku problem. Like, they are, are they smart enough to figure it out? And I yeah. really want to alleviate the sort of cognitive burden and, and the intimidation where you just say, oh, if you ever 
aren't aware, there's a learning training. Oh, good. It makes people feel a little better. And then for those who like every last detail in the world, mm -hmm. then it's every, and this is something for me to remind myself. And so this is sort of internal I documentation. So. I would love for screen readers to be able to read this. And I don't know whether it, it is yet. And I think with um, the latest versions of Tableau, there's sort of the, mm -hmm. the dashboard guide, which Side guide. Yeah. Um, yeah, 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 sort yeah. of yeah. maybe perhaps will eventually deprecate this. Um, uh, and then this is the, for those who don't want to do any analysis, it just describes, right? Yeah. What's the takeaway mm -hmm. of what's up here? And it's just a, you know, mail merge of sorts where you embed it and then you have call outs, right? What are the takeaways? Like, what's the big message? The big message is this and this, right? Like yeah. the sentence. And then people typically want to like go, not in this version, but they want to go and see the underlying data. And I remember early on, like I've, I've always wrestled with this notion of like, we want to make it more native that right. be able to download the underlying data. And so we try to do as much as we can with like click to see the details mm -hmm. and kind of have a smooth oh, wow. user experience Wow, yeah. um, and the dual encoding here, right? Like the dual encoding, you have the sort of interpretation, you have triple, I guess, like the color, the locate, the, uh, the height, and the then height. this down arrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. 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 Just trying yeah. to emphasize stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, and then kind of navigate and navigate back and download yeah, and the you've underlying got deep data. legs into your products as well. That's really nice. Right. So you can, you kind of give them a, um, a way into the, into the, what I would say the contextual world, because analytics products are typically focusing on analysis and right. uh, I've got another question to ask you in a minute, but that analysis piece at the moment, it still has to happen elsewhere from where the work is done. Right. Like Tableau talks about doing stuff in the, in the, in the flow of work, right. In Slack, but really actually. Um, this data needs to be living in Evertrue in, in, in lots of other places for it to be mm -hmm. of value. But let me ask you this yeah, as well. Yeah. How do you, how do you democratize the decision of what is the big takeaway, right? Because mm. typically an analyst is <laughs> at the very bottom of that food chain, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> and so I, I, I totally hear you on like, you know, you know, there needs to be the big takeaways. How do you arrive at that? Is that is that a process or is that something you've been able to kind of just use your understanding of visual analytics to be able to sort of get the point across to people that says, look, if you look at this data, this is what it's telling you. And it's more about the facts rather than it is about sort of the interpretation and actually people can interpret what they need to from these big mm. takeaways and what's mm. in front of them. Mm. So yeah, sorry, it's a difficult question. Yeah, I love that. I love that like, question. Yeah. And I would say, for fundraising dashboards, there is a design aesthetic and, and goal of having an intersection of reporting and process. And that requires a deep understanding of what end users care about. It requires right. deep empathy. It requires listening, um, subject matter expertise, talking to people who know more than you and what they really care about. Yeah. and they it's, it's sort of like it's a user requirements pro gathering process in which they don't come out and say it but i know they care about it more than anything for example we're really concerned about the number of donors is decreasing every year right those right. are comments that you sort of clue you in on what matters and so i've worked in the fundraising space uh for 23 years and so right. Worked with some incredibly talented people um, like David Lively at Northwestern and Aaron Moran, who I work with, and yeah. um, all sorts of folks um, uh, and annual giving professionals, right. um, you know, at Berkeley. And, um, and so it's th that's how I sort of talk to the best, yeah. I think, people you who know. Sort of and then I'm like, in the top this is what they care about. And then I show it to people who care about it, and then they give me feedback. Like, this is version 100. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. As you know, if I synthesize what you've just said in a, in a brutally simplistic way, you listen to people, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and all of it is super simple. Like, pay attention, make it simple. Yeah. Don't make it like. Don't use a lot of colors. And, yeah, like, exactly. Care. Yeah, I think yeah. care is even one word of like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, 
And, you know, I, I see a lot of video about, from data analysts, you know, new data analysts in the space, you know, you, you teach a lot of technical skills, but actually the soft things are just super simple and they yeah, take practice. Right. You know, how do you listen is a much more difficult question to answer because um, there's lots of techniques in that. There's also a little bit of synthesis. There's also a bit of you know, what the client says and their intentions sometimes aren't mm. the same thing. And so you have to pass what they say and I know when you say you're talking to your colleagues, there is an there's a there's an implied sense of um, understanding you've built over the years that you've done in the industry. So when someone says this, you know they are mm. going to be needing <laughs> these three other things, right? And funny story, remember where I when I told you I was doing analytics, um, yeah. you know, in Twitter and social media, that was for an alumni fundraising organization. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's it's all awesome. Goes full we start in the same place. I think we'll need to hire you. Okay. <laughs> I didn't I didn't stay in the industry long enough, but yeah, like it's it all comes in the same place. But anyway, no, I back to your it. point, like it's it's just simple stuff like listening, but the actual skill to do that and the experience of doing that does take time and practice. And you have to immerse yourself. It's almost like a method acting, mm -hmm. right? Like you can't do that thing well unless you live that experience a little bit and you get familiar with the language and sort of the um the tone mm. and it's hard to do that for lots of industries if you're like a consultant but if you're in a business mm. setting i think it is much easier for you to do it because you don't just do tableau you do a bunch of other things as well in the business and so that gets you close to the business in a way that you know no tableau consultant could ever get close to and so use that sort of mm. superpower to get stuff like this and and another thing i'll say is this looks like something that could be in the financial times and it's funny because when i look at you know i forget the, the, the gentleman from the financial times who runs um you know he's, he's made a book called um he's, he's, there's a book he's written about how to explain charts but i think the the principles you just outlined it's funny how they lead you to a, a style and a theme that feels similar to, to, to something else. And it's because mm. you're borrowing from the same principles. It's not actually, yeah, yeah. you are you haven't done a Financial Times uh, visualization. A Financial Times viz is not a Financial Times viz. It's actually just the simplicity and approach and the methodology mm. that gets you to this place that feels good and then therefore kind of leads you to to a really good place so yeah I, I love those points that you're making i think there's a couple of things one i think we draw inspiration from various peoples and, in, right. and incorporate into our views and i've drawn inspiration from the tableau community from the new york times right. from nate silver from various yeah. places yeah. and yeah. and the other thing that really resonates with me is that muscle that you're talking about and as a consultant i i when i did that for three years we had our own firm that was the that was the biggest growth in my tableau world right talk like these extreme situations where you had to deliver you couldn't just independently <laughs> work on things yeah right high yeah. pressure and yeah. it was a muscle building and hard work yeah yeah exactly yeah there is a there is well i don't know um i've been a consultant for a decade so like there is a little bit of weathering i like to call it um you're not a consultant to to you know to, to, to run the ship when it's sunny and nice, you're a consultant to like <laughs> to guide it through this the roughest seas and storms, right? That's when you I get called that. in. Like it's never nice and <laughs> sunny. Totally so. <laughs> and it's hard problems. They're not giving you the easy stuff. They're giving yeah, you exactly. like yeah. here is this massive issue. Yeah. But it, but ultimately you come out a better developer. Like I yeah. in those three yeah. years I got more out of it than the, the previous, you know, yeah. years combined. So you're yeah. you're you're the duration of your, if you've been doing Tableau for 10 years, like that's like 30 years, just like in a one person shop. It's you know? quite deep indeed, indeed. So this is, this is fantastic. So like, um, one of the things I'm going to do, we won't do it today because I, I think, you know, we've been chatting for some time, but one of the things I'm going to do is try and try and go through the experience that someone who has accessibility needs would need. And I think that sort of can be done in, in a couple of ways. One of the ways you showed me before the call was um, visual impairment, so colorblind checker. Um, are you able just to sort of show people that yeah. briefly and sort of see how you tested your dashboard in that? Because I think that's yeah, a very absolutely. simple thing that everyone can do that takes, again, another like minute to do, but actually exactly. brings that awareness straight into to what you're doing. So, yeah. And this is one of those things where it's like, you know, people are where people are like, don't use a lot of colors. Well, there's, yeah. a lot of re there's a lot of reasons for that, right? Yeah. And so this yeah. really, this color-blindness.com uh, website, I just found yeah. where you can upload your, your uh, screenshot and see what it looks like Amazing. in various 
conditions, most of which I'm unfamiliar with, but right. with a really simplistic design, mm -hmm. <laughs> it renders essentially the same. Yeah. It's when people encode things in 50 colors and yeah. it has to be blue because right. that's our, that's our brand. brand. Yeah. It yeah. just doesn't have any meaning to folks yeah. potentially. Yeah. It's just a quick, easy test. And Very chat. simple. Yeah. Our tableau, and, Tim. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like it's, it's sort of interesting as well because I kind of wish Tableau brought some of that into the product, you know, from, from a very, like, mm. in a very simplistic yeah. way. It doesn't even have to be like, um, oh, yeah, like a yeah, big, yeah, yeah. a big thing. Like what if you, your dashboard view just had a little toggle at the top that said like, um, not, not accessibility cause it's a little bit more nuanced than that, but, um, like you could simulate different, um, viewing experience. You can already do mobile and tablet. So maybe you could hijack that experience and, and just use the dashboard one to like, toggle through different sort of color faces. that's brilliant yeah that's like, brilliant so... that's that that blake yes <laughs> yes that's so cool have it integrated yeah, yeah right exactly. like yeah. that so is and talk go. about the browser yeah right yeah exactly. your comment about the value of the browser like that is such a perfect test yeah yeah and and it could even just be in tablet cloud and tablet server in the server view so you run there and you can kind of go through and test it but you know even I know Maureen Stone. Now, do you know Maureen Stone from Tableau? She so she mm -hmm. she is the uh, uh, mother of color in Tableau, and I, I don't think she's with Tableau anymore. But she was part of Tableau research for a long time, and there are very subtle things that the color palettes mm -hmm. do depending on the size and shape of of even a mark. They mm -hmm. change the color so that what you see like is actually what you see. So a very simple example, mm. if you select blue or red, depending on the amount of blue and the amount of red, Tableau subtly changes the blue and red. So it remains the same to you oh, wow. because at different sizes and scales, the intensity is different. And so, you know, if you look at the color palettes in Tableau, those have accessibility considerations built into mm. them. That is why it's blue mm. and orange. That's, a, that's something that people, you know, you see a Tableau dashboard, you see blue and orange, you go, oh, that's been done in Tableau. People think it's a brand thing. No, it's an accessibility thing because red and green obviously has those challenges. And so accessibility is actually the core of the product. And it doesn't mm. take that much more to go from that to, you know, what, what I've just suggested. How else could you kind of simulate this, this, this challenge? And, you know, with the... Um, tab order as a, as a very basic um, thing. I think another thing they could do there is when you're previewing a dashboard, um, have a pop-up that set like that calls out that accessibility. Because mm. the, the thing about that is, mm. I don't know if you've ever done this, but I only discovered the accessibility uh, tabbing uh, capability by mistake because <laughs> I happened to smash my keyboard when I'd already <laughs> clicked something and I was like, wait a minute you can tab through this. And I saw something get highlighted and I was like, how did that Hello. highlight get there? And I, you know, I didn't know, I just don't know these things. And why would you know? Like, and no. so just calling those things out can, can, can even help people who don't have disability or, you know, accessibility needs realize there's another way to navigate the screen that is mm. actually beneficial. Some people are faster with a keyboard than they are with a mouse for, for lots of good, you know, uh, lots of good reasons. So, so many ideas. We should have like a little workshop. I love it. Just like I just, love it. Just, just smash through these ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're, hit, you're hitting on sort of the the, the underlying brilliance and uh, what I find like uh, persistently um, inspiring about Tableau is they yeah, thought about yeah. this stuff. And then when you see other tools that are trying to emulate, I think of like Tableau as the piano and they're the kazoo. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> in the Bake Off, you know, it's. It's, it's quite clear. I love, I, I really appreciate um, this opportunity and what you, what you provide the community. I, 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 I listen to, I watch every one of your videos. I'm like, all right, what do you have to say? You always have some interesting uh, insights and I recommend you. to. Uh, amazing. Course. Amazing. I have to be careful. I, you know, there's, I think t Tableau is going through a very interesting transitional time and, you know, I sit on the more optimistic side of that, that transition, right? I, you know, I'm always, I, you know, the reason I make the videos I do is because tablets helped me in my life and in my career. And it's very oh. simple. I read, I read 
content and access content from, you know, uh, Jonathan Drummy, Andy Creeper, all these people. Like I've learned mm. so much from them. And it was so obvious mm. to me that, okay, like if I get to a place where I actually know something about Tableau, even even if it's so basic <laughs> and simple, I'll just regurgitate it to the world. <laughs> and hopefully that, awesome. that helps someone. And it turns out it does. And and so of course. That's why I stand the more optimistic side, because even if you don't like what's being done, it's still helping some people somewhere do their job and get things done faster. And, and so, hey, you know, sometimes I, I sort of fall on the wrong side of that, which is I'm too keen and I'm too excited about, you know, very basic things when Tableau should be focusing on other things. But on the broad scale, I think, you know, there's so many people doing great stuff with Tableau. I wanted to get you on because I think from from an accessibility perspective, you're, you're definitely, you're doing you're doing what you need to do to like understand the topic, not just, not just because you have accessibility needs or whatever. It's actually because you're passionate about it. And that, that comes through in your understanding. We've talked many times, you know, talked with Blake. I've talked to you now twice before this uh, recording. I think we could have recorded a podcast series just based on the number <laughs> of conversations. <laughs> <laughs> time flies. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It's, absolutely. So I, I really, really appreciate your time. I think one of the things I'll pledge to do um, in the next month or so is I will do that. I'll, do, I'll record the video unedited of going uh, through a dashboard um, with, I think, probably the screen reader on my Mac because mm. I think Apple's Accessibility capabilities are mm. actually quite good. And so mm. I kind of want to see what that experience is like. I want to try yeah. and get to a visualization on Tableau Cloud, starting from my desktop. Nothing, no no, no mouse, nothing. Let's just see what happens. <laughs> I and love so it. Go from there. I'll put a blindfold on. We'll just film yes. the experience. And, <laughs> I look forward um, to that. <laughs> and that will sort of be very much... Um, maybe maybe there's a dashboard you can you can send me a link you could recommend and we can kind of do the comparison of one which does have accessibility sort of considered and and, and one that doesn't so you can kind of see the contrasting yeah, um, that's sort idea. of perspectives of actually reaching those things and and understanding how they work absolutely great yeah. idea sounds yeah. great good we we just managed to keep it under an hour all um, right we it's said like we that. said we said like 40 <laughs> minutes but here we are <laughs> talk all day <laughs> I really appreciate I really appreciate you joining us. Th thank you so much. Likewise, uh, amazing. I appreciate it too. It's an absolute pleasure and honor. All right, take care. Take care. Thanks. Bye.